And one day they said to me like, don't you think she's weird? And I looked at her and she was so upset and I was like, no, I don't think she's weird actually. I think she's just like me. And we stuck together. And she is the one that was the first person that I photographed. Hi Clat, my name is Becky and this is my Get to Know Me with Clat. So I started at the age of 12 when I saw a butterfly. I was on a caravan trip with my friend and I had a Nokia phone with a really terrible camera and I took a picture of a butterfly and I was so happy with it even though it was terrible and I went onto Instagram and I was going to post it but I stuck a million filters on it and it was honestly dreadful. Um, part of the wing actually disappeared because of the amount of filters I used, it was that bad. Um, but I posted it and I was like, wow, this is amazing, I want to be a photographer. Um, so I started taking pictures of flowers and things like that and they weren't the greatest but I just kept posting them and then around the age of 14 I started going on to like animals, things like that. Um, and then at that point I was like, I'll never photograph people, fashion's boring, like who does that? But in the end, I decided at the age of 16 that I would actually give it a go. And that's when I started doing portraits and taking it seriously. Um, I wouldn't say hidden talent, but I do sometimes do fashion styling on set, uh, source garments. Um, I did a course with Condé Nast as well for styling, which was really good. Um, and yeah, I mean, I made these hair extensions, which is really fun. Um, they took quite a while to make as well, but I'm quite proud of them. And I have loads more at home. I have like leopard print and all sorts. Um, and I make bracelets as well. Um, and if there's like a garment that I don't have in my wardrobe that I want, I can sometimes make it as well. Yeah, so I worked with my best friends because um, I didn't have access to models. I didn't even know about modeling agencies, to be honest, at that time. And I didn't even know how to get hold of them. I was like, wow, how do I get hold of people? So I got my friends to go to the local park with me and I didn't know how to use my camera. So I had to learn how to use it manually. Um, so at first my photos were dreadful because like, the flash was going off when it was bright daylight. So it was just like blown out, it was horrible. Um, but I gradually practiced um, and I decided I liked it. So I started doing photo shoots with my friends regularly um, after they'd been in school, because I wasn't in school at that point. So after they'd been at school, I would do photo shoots. Um, and yeah, we just kind of like, went home, I'd edit the photos. My mum bought me Lightroom and I was so happy. Um, and yeah, I just edited the photos and I started submitting them because I was 16 during the pandemic. So I was stuck at home, I had nothing to do. And I had all these pictures just sitting there and I was just like, what could I do with it? And I thought, oh wow, I wish I was like working with these magazines, wouldn't that be cool? So I looked into it and I found out I could. So I thought, I'll submit, but I probably won't get anywhere. And then I actually did. So from there, um, it was from July to New Year's, um, I just kept progressing because at that point, um, college opened up again. It was no longer online and I was able to work with people in my course. And yeah, I'd style them, I'd source garments, I'd do their hair and makeup, I'd take photos of them, I'd do it all myself. And then I would submit it. And yeah, luckily enough, it, it paid off. <laughs> Okay, so when I was a kid, because I'm half Indian, so when I was a kid I had like the typical Indian girl hair and my hair was to my knees, long dark brown hair to my knees. So I used to have the nickname Rapunzel as a child. I know that she's blonde, but I was like the Asian version in a way or half Asian version. And people were like, wow, your hair's so beautiful. And mum was like, oh yeah, it's her Indian side like coming out. And I loved it, but then I decided as I was about 16, 17, that I just had enough. I wanted to start dyeing it, so I just chopped it. And I was like, I don't know what Disney princess I would be at this point, but I did dye my hair black and pink. And uh, I don't know if you're familiar with Monster High, but I grew up with Monster High and I had the nickname Draculaura. People in the streets would be like, oh, you look like Draculaura. And I'd be like, oh, thank you. But even my friends would refer to me as that. So maybe not a Disney character, but I went from being Rapunzel to Draculaura. <laughs> Mm. 
Um, not as much as I want to, if I'm honest, but um, it's quite difficult because I'm not 100% familiar with my Asian side and I really want to explore it more. Um, but I met my sister for the first time um, in 2020 and she is fully Indian and it was an amazing experience. I was like, because she makes music sometimes, so I was like, let's do a shoot together um, for fun. I had access to a studio um, while I was in college and I was like, let's do it. So we met up and I styled her and it was so much fun. Um, and we incorporated her fashion because we're so similar, even though we've, we'd never met. She's like a Bratz doll in a way, like the way she is, but she still goes for the traditional Indian. So we incorporated the traditional jewelry and all of that, like the bangle, it was a lovely experience. And we managed to get that on the cover of a magazine as well, which was so exciting. Um, but yeah, I really want to incorporate my Indian culture more, but I don't really get the opportunity. I feel like there's not much representation in the fashion world when it comes to Indian culture. If you look at editorial stuff, you might get like things here and there, but most of the time it doesn't go straight down to the Indian culture. And for me, I want to bring that in more. So I'm still working on that at the moment. Um, I mostly do sustainability things through my personal page where I, I model for some brands um, or I just post like fashion content. Like, what I'm wearing right now is all secondhand. So I would say about 90% of my wardrobe is secondhand. Um, I just love to go to charity shops. I love to buy online. And I think if you have something in your wardrobe, that you haven't worn for about a year and you don't have a reason to wear it. You don't grab it, sell it. And if you want, replace it with something else. And I think in the fashion world, there's so much fast fashion and so many trends. And at the end of the day, fashion repeats itself. So why not just keep those garments and like, you know, recycle them, donate them, pass them down in the family. That's always been a thing in my family. I mean, I have loads of hand-me-downs from my cousins that are older. It's just, that's always been a thing. And then once they're like rags and they're falling apart, then you get rid of them. But if they're not, they go to the younger ones and they just keep getting passed down because you just, you need to be careful. You don't want to contribute to, you know, the landfill and everything. So I think this, this generation as well, my generation, we're more careful but there's, there's still a lot of fast fashion going around and I don't agree with it because let's face it, you buy it and it'll break really quick. Or you stick it in the washing machine, it shrinks. Whereas like older stuff doesn't do that. <laughs> so that's what I would say, shop sustainability, you know, yeah, <laughs> that's what I would say. Sushi. Yeah, or pasta, because I live on pasta, that's the thing. I'm always making Italian food, it's like my favorite. Um, I love to cook it. Although yesterday I made Indian and I hadn't um, eaten Indian in a while and I was like, oh my God, I've really missed this. Um, but yeah, my favorite would probably be like salmon maki. If I could eat that every day, breakfast, lunch and dinner, I think I would. <laughs> I would just live on, on it, it's just the best food. Yes, I struggle to read books because of my OCD that I have. Um, so I hadn't read a book properly since I was in school and that was years ago. So I was like, because my family are bookworms and I'm always like, oh, that looks nice, that looks nice, that sounds interesting. So I gave it a go. I found a book in a charity shop. The front cover looked interesting and the author was Sophie Kinsella. Um, I can't remember the name of the first one, um, but there was one that I read recently that was something like how to stop your sister's wedding night when you know it's not the, the one and I was like oh this sounds juicy so I had to read it and the thing is I'd read one before that I went to charity shop and after that I just bought like a whole collection of her books um, and I'm gradually going through them they're like gossip drama sort of like girly books and they're all set in the early 2000s as well which I love so they're like, they're nothing like really educational, they're just fun. Fun, juicy, interesting, that's what I like. I think honestly, if I hadn't have left school early, I probably wouldn't be where I am now. I probably wouldn't have gone to college, or if I did, I wouldn't have done the course that I did. Um, and I wouldn't be as confident as I am now. 
because when I was in school I was a completely different person. Um, I was always a weird kid as well so I had no friends in primary and then at the very end of primary I made friends but then we all went our separate ways when it went to secondary school so that was sad. And then in secondary um, I met the other weird kids if that makes sense, the ones that would always get picked on and we all formed a group. Um, apart from one of my friends, Jazz, I've been friends with her since we was about, I'm not even sure, it was in year five because she was getting picked on and one day they said to me like don't you think she's weird and I looked at her and she was so upset and I was like no I don't think she's weird actually I think she's just like me and we stuck together and she is the one that was the first person that I photographed so although she was in school me leaving we still had that bond and despite my health conditions that I was having at the time and my school not being supportive they tried taking my mum to court and everything over the fact that I had to keep going to A&E and having emergency appointments um, which all come down to severe anxiety and it was affecting me so badly I couldn't even walk at one point it was really bad um, and I went home my mum said to my school if you're not going to support her I'm taking her out and I'm going to homeschool her and I said mum I just need something that's going to help me I, I need you and she was like I'm here so I went home and she, we talked about it and I got a little bit better and she was like well what are you going to do and I was like I like taking pictures so I really focused on that and my mum was so supportive um, and then yeah eventually I, I started taking pictures of my friends properly and submitting them and because I wasn't in school I had the time to sit home and edit I had the time to research online how to use camera equipment properly and watch videos and everything and educate myself which I really enjoyed and I found my passion through that um, and then over time I just decided this is what I want to do so when I was 16 close to 17 I started my own business um, I started my, my own website and I started being like I'm gonna start getting paid for this and it was only like a tenner at first because I was like I'm, I'm normally just starting out um, but I gradually grew it and as I've gotten older I'm like yeah this is what I want to do so if I hadn't have had that bad situation with my anxiety leaving school I probably would have just stuck with school not realized I wanted to do photography gone to college doing something I didn't even know you know if I wanted to do and, and yeah I ended up luckily enough developing a portfolio where I could go into college and be like I don't have GCSEs because I was too unwell to be in school but I have produced this portfolio and I know that I'm capable of creating this art if you just give me the chance and at first they didn't want to let me in they were like you need GCSEs to be on a, a level three course and they messed up my courses and everything they put me on a level two but got me an a uh, certificate for level one which was annoying but I just pushed that to the side I was like I'm gonna get my level three diploma and I'm gonna prove that I'm capable of doing this and I worked hard despite the anxiety still being there and I gradually got there and I think Jazz if, if my friend Jazz hadn't been there as well I don't know if I would have been able to do it so yeah it's all because of her really she doesn't realize it but we, we are sticking together through life because if it wasn't for her I probably wouldn't even be photographing models now so it all, it all ties together. <laughs>